चलो फाइव मिनट्स आईज क्लोज सिट एंड वॉच द माइंड अगेन टेक दैट चैलेंज अप वन मिनट आई एम गोइंग टू बी कॉन्शियस इन द प्रेजेंट मोमेंट conscious one minute 
30 seconds, 20 seconds, 5 seconds it happened. Did you do your homework? Yes. Did you do that one minute experiment again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does it work? Yes. Not happening, no? Why is it not happening? I think I was making a very strong effort. Oh, I don't have to bring any thoughts. So my mind was constantly like, no thoughts should come, no thoughts should come. And then I said, forget it. Let it be what's happening. Let me just be there. Huh. And then it just happened for a few seconds. Like, ah, how many of you realize this? Perfect. Perfect. It does not happen by suppression. I don't want to think, I don't want to think is suppression, is repression. Are you seeing this? It will not happen by suppression. How will it happen? By recognizing what it is and just being with it. What he said? May I just drop that no thought should come, no thought should come. That dropping and just being with what is, boof, it happened. One more story. There was a Zen master. The way he taught was through halt. They call it halt. It's a different language altogether. But they call it, you have to halt. And wherever you are, whatever seva you are doing in the ashram, I will just scream, halt. And everybody has to hold. Yes, whatever you are doing. So in the ashram, we they had a little um, river like me. Yes. You have a dam where you can open and close the river. Yeah. So the control of the dam is with the ashram people. Because it's owned by them. Very small, not very huge. Don't imagine a huge dam. Very small dam, just enough for irrigating the little farm in the ashram. So... It was in their own hands to open that dam and let the water in. But now it was completely dry. There was no river. Some of them were working on that bed of the so-called river. Um, physical work, actually digging it out and clearing out <coughs> the bed. And he screamed, halt. Some have the axe like this. Some were picking up the stones. And they had to halt. Yes. And what he did? He started the, he opened the dam. The water started coming. And they, they kept standing there with their axe. Okay, it's coming, it's coming, it's rising, it's rising, it's rising. The first one said, oh my God, I can't do this. I cannot be like this. I cannot be. Constantly the mind was like, oh, he doesn't care. What a master! He jumped out of that river yeah? and he was out. There was a second one. He was like, I'm not like that loser. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. Water started coming to the nose. No, I cannot give up my life for this. And he ran out. The last person was left there. Yeah? Luckily, he was standing up with the axe. So, he was upright. No? And the water came. The water came. And he was like, it's okay. It's no point giving up. If the master has said something, there has to be a meaning for this. Yes, and I have to figure that out. So the water rose, it rose, it rose. It went over his head. The Zen master jumped into the river, pulled him out. Yeah. And he bowed down to the Zen master, touched his feet and he said, Thank you, I got it. I got your message. So the other two who had plead now felt like losers. They said, what? What did he get? What is it that we missed? So, he says, ask him rather than the master telling you, the person who has discovered this, let him answer. And he said, when I was there and the water was rising, rising, the mind went on and on, run, do this. This is silly. Why are we doing this? Mind was on. Yeah, when it came till my nose, it was talking. Yeah, and then I was like, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to run at this last moment. Even if it is, 
you know, my death. I am ready to die now. The moment I said I am ready to die and I let go, my mind stopped. The water rose over my head. But my mind had stopped and I experienced the stopped mind. I experienced the no mind. I got the message. He bowed. In that ashram, he was the next Zen monk who got invited. No mind is the way. No mind is the key. Are you getting it? That's all enlightenment is. So if you are in this big Manohar Kahani Wali Dunya of yours, that no mind is white light or blue light or green light or something is going to happen, Drop it. That is not enlightenment. Enlightenment simply means no mind. It's got nothing to do with religion. It's got nothing to do with a person. It's got nothing to do with an idol. It doesn't matter whether you're a Muslim or a Hindu. It doesn't matter whether you follow this or that. It doesn't matter. Enlightenment means no mind. And it's not going to happen without that effort. Are you seeing this? A lot of us have this thing, huh? Guruji will bless me, I will get enlightened next lifetime. No. It's not going to happen. So forget about it. Oh, Guruji will bless me. Guruji's blessings are there. Your patra is upside down. You understand patra? I've explained this a million times. This is a patra, a vessel. Yeah? Patra. Your patra is upside down. Blessings are showering on you. Already the knowledge is there. The kriya is there. Guruji is giving you a million meditations to stop the mind, to become no mind. But is anything happening? No progress. Why? Because your patra is upside down. Means you are not making an effort. Patra upside down means you are not making an effort from your side. You have to turn your patra up. That will happen only by your effort to be conscious. Yes. And what is the reason my patra is upside down? Ignorance, okay, Maya is there all over. And ego. No. ego. My ego does not allow my only patra to go in the correct direction. My ego wants to say, no, I don't want to do this. Or my ego wants to say, I already know. Finished. Your patra is upside down. You will never learn. Are you getting this? Ego is the only problem from the beginning of the creation or the creation of this body-mind complex, okay? Beginning of this little unit. It started with ego. It started with I. It started with I want. Yes? Turn that back up. Drop that ego. Only a person who is humble who has the humility can walk this path. You've noticed this, no? When you get into your big ego zone, you don't get anything. Yeah. So drop that ego and be here as if, yes, there is something I don't know that Krishna knows, that Krishna is saying to me. Yeah. Let me listen to that. Not what my mind already knows. Then what's the point of being here? Go spend your time, weekend at the movies. Your mind already knows and you're holding on to only what you know. Yeah? Move from what I know to there is a lot that I don't know. Then the patra turns around. Then I start receiving the knowledge rather than making big obstacle in front of it with my ego. Yeah. 
turn your mantra then start making that conscious effort to recognize where my mind is not letting me be in the present did you do that homework divided mind homework yes what did you figure out how much percentage and where When I thought love or compassion, it, it doesn't exist. And my feelings were completely filled with hatred and anger. Very honest. She's so honest about it. Only an honest person will be able to really progress on this path. Yeah. You don't have anything to do with her answer. You see your own answer. You recognize your own answer. And did you do the third homework? Did you meditate? No. Does it happen in meditation? Why was it not happening in meditation? Why were you not conscious? Why were you in a dreamlike state? What is the meaning of a dreamlike state? Thoughts. Dreamlike equals to unconscious. Equals to thoughts. Equals to images. Are you getting this? All this is same. It's synonymous. You are not understanding this. You are thinking all this is different things. This is all one. Unawareness. Are you getting this? When I'm saying be conscious, what do I mean? Drop the images in the mind. Drop holding on to thoughts. You start talking to a thought, a thought comes. Krishna said this. No, but I understand it as this. Who started the but I understand? I started talking to the first thought that came in. Are you getting it? And that first thought that actually knocks at your door and pushes you to start talking to it, to start an internal dialogue, you have to refrain from that. That is silence. Are you getting it? Drop that thought. Drop an image. We think in images. Why do we think in images? Have you ever thought? Why? Perfect memory, but why? How did I get into that habit? <coughs> so we, see good, we experience some good or bad, and so I just want to experience again or don't want to experience Emotion, again. Emotions? No, the, so mind, the mind is so designed that it understands images before words. When you were a little baby, two, two and a half year old, mommy taught you A, B, C, D before you went to kindergarten. And when she taught you A, B, C, D, how did she teach you? She showed you the picture of the apple. You did not understand the alphabet A. You looked at the picture of the apple and said A. You looked at the picture of the ball and said B. Do you understand this? You really didn't know even that that letter is B. You could not understand that. You could not understand that alphabet is C. Words did not register. First what registers? Image. Image. Yeah? That is the first thing as a baby that registers in the memory. Got it? That's how memory is formed. Memory is only images. Have you noticed? You will not remember in the far past, you will not remember exactly verbatim what he or she said. But you will remember that whole scene, the image. She stood there, he stood there and they both said this to me. That has created hatred inside. I don't remember exactly words from him or her. But that image 
and there is a relation, that sensation that that image produces in me. Image is equal to sensation. Yeah? Are you understanding sensation now? It's more like you can remember better if there is an emotion attached to it. Sensation. Don't call it emotion yet. Huh? It's just a sensation. If you went on vacation, say to a mountain top in Colorado, yeah, and that really cold feeling, that crisp feeling, yeah, how much ever you come back home and describe to her, you know, that feeling that was awesome, but you remember it more as a connection of the image and the sensation in the body of that cold crispness. You see what I'm saying? The words are later on added to explain that. But in the memory, words are not there. In the memory, image connected with sensation is there. You see this? So, when I'm saying you are dreaming, you are also holding on to a sensation. This also needs to be dropped. Recognize it at least that it's happening. The silence is like not even the thought should come. Not even an image, not yeah. even a sensation in the body. <laughs> Are you getting it? Not even that sensation in the body. But isn't the sensation more of a like the Rajasthamas Sakwa thing where sensation might come but you don't have to react? When I am in complete silence and no mind state, it doesn't matter if there is Rajas Tamasa Sattva outside. External heat does not cause the sensation inside. Externally, I might say something bad, insulting to you. When somebody insults you, what happens inside? Fire. Yeah. Inside something happens. Got it? Externally, that is not going to go away. Inside that sensation should also not happen. So stable the inner environment has to be. That is no mind. Unaffected by external stimuli. So if you just imagine there's a fire, imagine a big fire, and you take ghee or oil and you throw it in the fire it'll change. You throw water, there will be an instant and immediate reaction to what you're doing. Now imagine a fire where whatever you're doing, the fire is still the same. It's just glowing. It's just keeping on. That's the state you want to reach. Right now, whatever happened, a wind blows, the fire will go. You throw water, you throw sand, anything is going to react to it like that. That reaction is the reaction that we feel. Someone says something, there's a sound, there's all that. There's immediate, like a flutter inside your body. That flutter is the sensation I'm talking about. Are you getting it? Yeah. So what's the difference between sensation and emotion? Next, next level of sensation is emotion. When the sensation gets, no, you start giving it extra emphasis. Have you taken a karma? Do you know what is impression? Yeah, sensation happens. One impression. Again, I emphasize it. Oh, this happened to me. Oh, I hate it. She did this. Why did he do this? This constant, that big impression that I formed, that is emotion. Caused by my constant attachment to that sensation. So first is sensation. Then happens the attachment to the sensation. The product of that is emotion. Understood? So, uh, like we once we gave an example of like the uh, chalk. You are writing something that gives some weird sensation. At that time, actually, even we close our eyes, we hear only the sound. Image is really not registered. But why do we still ha still have that sensation in our mind? The image is there in the past. 
So image of sound also stores in my memory. Not as a sound, as an impression it is stored in my memory. Yes, from the past I had this impression of the teacher doing it when I was a kid and I hated that sound of the chalk and it's registered, it's saved there. So now when it happens, actually I'm not even reacting to what is happening right now in the external environment. What am I reacting to? That impression is stored in my memory. Yeah, that is why sometimes it's not even loud right now, but you have reacted as if it has been very loud and very screechy. Are you seeing this? Yeah, like that we form constant impressions. So for example, suppose husband wife, Srinath and Malati. Yeah. She's like, oh, she picked on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Suppose they fight. Yeah, today they fight. Big fight. Impression stored in this mind, impression stored in that mind. 10 days, 15 days, one month down the line, event is forgotten. Impression is there. Yeah, one month down the line, again something happens. Yeah, very small thing happens. He put the shoes in the middle of the room and she started shouting and reacting. And he is wondering, such a small thing and why that big explosion? What is she reacting to? The impression from one month ago. Are you seeing this? Yeah. So recognize the power of impression. And that impression is caused by just this sensation. This sensation is caused either by a thought or an image I am hanging on to. Root cause. Going down one 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 down deep. Holding on to, oh, this is the root. This is what is troubling me. This is what I need to work on. So the first step to this process would be to not react to the sensation and not worry about the sensation not coming in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then when you when you are doing that, I think there is a transition where you stop right. The sensation stops happening. Is do you create that sensation too, or the you sensation? Can, you can do that sometimes because in the past I have an experience. Shunat Mantri, one month ago experience. I have saved it. Now I create a sensation to this past memory. I do it. Why? Because of indulging in that dreamlike state, bringing that past memory back. He said this, then I said this, then this happened. This I am doing. I am pushing myself into the dreamlike state. And then I only kick in the way the, the sensation. Are you getting this? Yeah. So, so no mind is equal to being 100% conscious. Not going into this dreamlike state. Or the better words which we put on the slide yesterday. Refraining from slipping into the streamlike state. Yes, when I'm not conscious, I slip into the dream. I have to make that effort of not slipping. The thought will come from external, somebody will say something. Yeah, you don't like winter, it is going to get cold. Chicago is horribly cold, you cannot avoid it. But what are you really reacting to? Your past impressions of Chicago cold, or Chicago winter. Winter I am here, but I have a memory of the past winter and I am reacting to that. And I start on my dream like journey inside me. Are you seeing it? We are constantly saying it past. Now you understood all thoughts are past. Even if it is about tomorrow, it is still past. Why? Because I am reacting to an impression I have said about what is going to happen tomorrow from the past I am reacting. You getting it? All thoughts are past. Even if they are about the future. How is that? Uh, so if I worry about the future, for example, mm -hmm. how is that thought from the past? How will you know what is the real in the future? You don't know the real future. You are worrying on the basis of an impression from the past. 
thinking that this will be the future. This might be the future. This should not be the future. What are you referring to? An impression from the past. Again, it is still a, is a thought from the past. The thought is in the past. You might be planning for the future, but the thought is about the past. Oh, this should not go wrong. In the past, I have done things like this which went wrong. I saw Rajiv doing this renovation project and it went all wrong. This should not happen. This should happen. Let me plan like this. What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. Recognition. Recognition is important. That's it. Hmm. So, are you saying there is no conscious thinking at all? There is conscious thinking. You are not doing conscious thinking is what I am saying. Okay, so what is conscious thinking? Not thinking. <laughs> is conscious. <laughs> no thoughts? No thought. No so mind. So how are you processing right now? I am not processing. Yeah. It's okay. coming through me. It's very spontaneous. Somebody asked me yesterday this question. I said, it's not me when I'm talking over there. You think it is me. I'm not processing. I'm not thinking. I'm not even here. It's coming through me. <laughs> so how can that happen for me? That can happen only when you totally drop attachment to thought, image, impression, this person, that person, this thing. Dropping that attachment. Are you seeing this? Attachment is not faking yourself. Oh, I'm not attached to this. It is a real dispassion. When you are in that state of dispassion, you are in this world, but you are not here. You become like an empty flute. Somebody else is playing the music. I've told you this many times. I'm not here. Can I give an example? Like, uh, mostly it happens with mom and kids. Like, kid just comes and asks me a question. You don't think like, okay, my kid will come. He'll ask me this question. I have to say this answer. Now, if what if he asks this question? No, it just happens spontaneously. So we all experience such kind of things in our life, but only thing we don't know that it is conscious. The moment it becomes one hundred percent in our life, we will bring that. So that is just, it happened to all of us. It's just an example. Spontaneous, being totally a witness. Not, even an answer not coming from my Raga or Desha. You just be there, it comes. The problem is doership. Are you seeing this? I, I am the doer. I am talking, I am saying, no, 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 darling, you are not puppets. You think you are doing it is happening. Life is happening. Your birth happened. After your birth, automatically your breath is happening. You are not breathing. You are not being born. Like that only when you become a mother or father, you are not creating. You are a channel through which it is happening. Like that only one day the breath stops. You don't stop breathing. When you are not born, when you are not breathing, when you are not dying, then where are you in the whole process that is life, no? What is this big I, 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 I? Drop this doership. You are not doing. It is happening through you. Wake up. Recognize this. Become that pure instrument. The problem is you have this doership, I am doing. The day you drop the I, you're conscious, 100%. Because there is no attachment to this. The moment I drops, what drops? Attachment. Mind drops. Mind is related to I. I and mine. I and mine. I and mine. If I has dropped mine, then drop. What did? This is true dispassion. So, just to uh, combine Rajiv's question and Marthi's question. So, how, what is wrong in planning versus thinking, right? So, we all have some kind of presentation at work, one way or the other. 
So just imagine you prepping for that presentation, number crunching, going through researching or whatever. You come up with your presentation, you prepare for it. Not entertaining how it goes, that's the karma phalam. Let's not talk about it. But you prepped, you prepped. The day of presentation comes, some people are very OCD. Mm -hmm. Some people want this. At this point, I have to say this. Everything is very planned. There is no there is no room for spontaneity at that time. They will rehearse, 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 rehearse. But what if you just prepped for an exam, for a presentation and stopped? And let's see what happens the next time. If someone breaks your train of thoughts, because you are so OCD, you might your your psychological balance might be off and you might say things wrong. What if you have that wiggle room? I have prepped. It's not that I have not planned, I have not prepped. It just comes through me. But what happens is, I have to make sure this presentation is the best work that I put forward. I will go any distance to make sure that happens. Even if it means shushing someone with asking a valid question. Okay, they are asking a question at a wrong time, but you are still doing it. I think that's the part where we are resisting. The ego is resisting the spontaneity. It is a very subtle way we do it, but we are resisting that spontaneity. Anything else? Being spontaneous, he gave you your own real life example that you do at work. Yeah? We prepared this presentation, it's been four weeks we have been preparing. There are 100 plus slides that you're looking at. Yeah? There's an expectation you get it like this, you don't get it like this, I have to present this. Sometimes I don't know what is the next slide. I have to look at the slide and then I have to talk. It's like that. Yeah? There was no plan for 40 minutes to talk about being conscious. The plan was to finish the short Kriya by now. You see? Spontaneity. There is no plan. That means I don't have to plan in life. No, no, no. I have a fantastic presentation here, right? I have planned, but I have dropped the attachment to my plan. This is the way it should go, is the attachment to the plan. What it? You give your hundred percent. Do what needs to be done. Yeah, but drop that feverishness in the mind. This should be like this. This should not be like this. This is the right thing to do. This is not right. That, I leave it to time, God, universe, superpower, whatever you believe. One more question. So, um, in relationship usually, Say for example, in any relationship, you have to trust the person and you expect something like, you know, they should be open or not open or some kind of thing. Is that also an expectation? Yes, it's an expectation. Mm -hmm. Why do you have an expectation? He must be thinking that, oh, she should not have expectation. That is his expectation. Both of the expectations are at war with each other. You remember yesterday's slide? Mm -hmm. Democratic Party and Republican Party. Constantly war there is. Yeah. Joy. <laughs> I have a good example about planning. There's a this is a real life experience when I was still in architecture college. A friend of mine, he was giving we were all giving our exam. We had escalators and elevators as our we had to draw that. And in the exam, we had a question on an elevator. But this guy was drawing an escalator. So yes, dude, it's elevator what I have just done escalator, I'm going to draw escalator. <laughs> <laughs> so his plan was that he's going to do an escalator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, reminded me of my exam paper. I was drawing a reinforced concrete wall, supposed to be retaining wall. The guy, examiner came and looked at it. Are you building a dam? <laughs> I'm like, no, it's just a wall. <laughs> I had too much reinforcement. <laughs> There's too much reinforcement in life is attachment. Drop that attachment to your great plan because he has a better plan than yours. <laughs> yeah? So, trust him. You do your best that you have to do, and after that, drop. Yeah. Karma phalam is what I have to drop. I have to do my karma. Yeah. Whatever action it is, I have to complete that. 
after that, the expectation it should go like this and not go like this. That I have to drop. That expectation it should go like this and not go like this is based on an impression from the past. Are you getting it? That is what I'm saying. Thought is always in the past. Okay, this probably is not related to your making decisions later, but how do you manage other people's expectation and attachment of you? Very simple. Be yourself. They get it or they don't. <laughs> <laughs> They get it or they don't. That's they how. Don't. Then what do you do? That's okay. They don't. They don't. They so don't. Now this is your expectation. Right? They have to. But you deal with that, right? You have to deal with that, no? You all are not getting it since yesterday. I don't plan to spend 45 minutes on explaining this, but I'm still explaining it. Yeah? You still deal with it. How am I dealing with it? Like that. No expectation. Oh, you should get it in the first... Yes. So, take this example, no, real life example happening in front of you, take it to your personal, I don't know your personal issues. You start equating. This is how I have to do. This is all about mind to be accepted. If that mentality is transcending the mind. Exactly. How will you transcend the mind without knowing the mind? Our problem is we push dirt under the carpet. Does it mean it's clean? That is why 20 years of Kriya, nothing has happened. No mind has not happened. Why? Because mind has been pushed under the carpet. That's not how you're going to get rid of the mind. You open up the mind. That's where the ego gets hurt. The ego gets hooked. It's going to want to run away. It feels restless. It says, no, no, close it up. It's a can of worms. By closing it up and pushing it under the carpet, you are not going to transcend the mind. You transcend the mind by opening up the can, facing the what is that? Problem, whatever. The ghost in the jar. I don't know what you call it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The skeleton in the cupboard. Jack in the box. The jack in the box, yeah. whatever it is. I am this book. Suppression, so, this is coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, somebody in my family told me, you always do this, so we have to open it up. So you open it up, and now we'll go deeper into what Krishna is saying, how to open it up. Yes. Yeah. The sensation that we're talking about, are we all conscious of it? Not always, that is the problem. Huh? So we will be talking in the next sutra how we lose consciousness. Because of sensation translating into emotion. Okay. So, before we go deeper into this, this discussion, we have to do our morning sadhana. Yes. Morning sadhana is based on this only. Conscious. conscious. Completely conscious. Now, mind is conscious. It's not conscious. It's all the time going into a dreamlike state. What happens to your heart? Not the pumping heart. The emotions, what they... What do they do? They take you again into a dreamlike state. Right? What doesn't take you into a dreamlike state? Breath. Breath is the only thing that does not take you into a dreamlike state. When you were in your mother's womb for nine months, how were you breathing? Huh, but how are you breathing? Was the chest moving? Perfect. So from where was the breath coming in? From the navel area. Yeah. So today we are all going to become fetuses inside mommy's womb. And we are going to just focus on the movement of the stomach. What happens when I breathe in? How does the stomach move? Out. It comes out. When I breathe out, what happens to the stomach? Okay. It goes in. Clear? So what are we going to do? We are going to sit in Vajrasana. How are you in your mummy's womb? What was the position? Yeah, yeah like this. Right? Yeah. How many of you know Shishu Pose? Yoga Master? Shishu Pose? Child Pose. Child Pose. Child Pose. Sorry, I use the Sanskrit word. <laughs> See, look at her. Yeah. Huh? Shishu pose. 
automatically breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, you will automatically feel like falling into this pose. Yeah? So go into the shishu pose because he's right in the front. Now go to the side. Side pairs. You might want to do this. Oh, okay. Yes? Fall into the shishu pose and stay like this but still focusing on the navel. Got it? If your legs are hurting, then you sit on the side. You sit like this sometimes. Mm -hmm. sit. Yeah. Just being in that fetal pose is important. You never sat in Sukhasan in your mother's womb. There was not enough space. <laughs> <laughs> she would have screamed, ah, what is he doing inside? <laughs> Where are you focusing? Navel. On the navel throughout, your focus is on your stomach. When you breathe in, what happens? It comes out. When you breathe out, it goes in. Just relax and breathe. Calm and feeble. You don't have to purposely breathe too hard. Just normal breath. Relax the breath, let it be comfortable. Recognize you are in the head. Ah, you are in the head. Yes, mind is always chit chatting. Where are you? In the head. When you are experiencing emotions, where are you? The heart. the heart. Take your awareness to the navel. That is important. You will not keep your awareness in the mind. Every time you see, you start thinking, where are you? You are in the mind. If some emotion is coming up, where are you stuck? Heart. Heart. In the heart. You come to the navel. navel. Yeah. Just like you were breathing in mommy's womb. From the navel. Again and again, take your attention to the breath. Now do it. Take a deep breath in. Push your stomach out. Now push your stomach back in. Breathe out. Deep breath in. Push your stomach out. In. Out. In. Out. In, out. Are you focusing on the navel? Are you understanding what is the meaning of focusing on the navel? The movement of the stomach? Mm -hmm. Understood? Very clear? Yeah? That's what you're supposed to do throughout. Yeah? And then you're falling down also. Yeah? Fall down. It's okay. Just fall down naturally. Don't lie down. Just drop. In your mom's womb, you just dropped. You didn't think, oh, I should lie right or left or right. No thoughts, just drop. Yeah? Be conscious, very conscious throughout. Don't get into the dreamlike state. There it is. No thinking, no thoughts, no images. Completely <coughs> conscious of the breath. Every time a dreamlike state comes up, refrain from talking to yourself. You understand talking to yourself, no? <clears throat> this happened, then she said this, then I said this, then this happened. This I am talking to myself. Refrain from it. Refrain from slipping into the dreamlike state. Yeah? Remember to fall. <laughs> and the fetus would never open his eyes to see where am I falling. <laughs> yeah? So remember, you are a fetus in mummy's womb. Eyes closed. Completely conscious. I will not slip into a dreamlike state.